I think uh, he, he was always drawn to very uh, simple and obvious uh, geometric forms. I mean, mm-hmm. if you even look at their new campus, right, it's this big giant uh, saucer. It's circular. Right. It's a, it's a torus. Yeah. yeah. So he, he always liked to start with these geometric forms. Uh, um, the, the Mac was a, a rectangle standing up, mm-hmm. a vertical rectangle, and uh, um and so the next uh, was a cube, but I do, uh, I do think that at at that time also the connection machine was very much uh, the avant-garde in in computer design, uh, intern inside and out. The whole idea that you could make a computing device. There was a thought that all of computing was going to go in that direction at some point, right? Yeah. That that um, this was. Uh, this was taking, um, in a way, it, it was, um, I don't want to say <laughs> miniaturizing, but it was compacting, shall we say, what had uh, the notion of a parallel processing uh, computer going from the cray to the, to the connection machine. You should see this, this uh, uh, amazing shift into something that also was taking you into the future. And uh, that design, your design of the connection machine, and this is where, uh, you know, we, when we talked about um, uh, Steve saying, well, who designed it? And I said, too late, she's an artist now. Uh-huh. Um, uh, was because he was, he was looking at everything that was the best in design, whether it was Sony for consumer electronics or he also wanted to see what was happening in computing, what signaled um, the the future, the avant-garde, the vision of what computing could become. Do you know when he saw the connection machine the first time? It was pretty early on, I think. You know, I left the company in 1985, June 4th, mm-hmm. 1985, and... I think I would have known if Steve Jobs had visited before that, but on the other hand... I don't he... think he ever visited. I think he saw it in publication. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it came out, the first CM1 came out in the end of April 1986. Uh, I was in Boston. I came back to Boston from Munich for the introduction, and it was during that time that Chernobyl blew up. So it's it's possible to... Um, f- fix the date fairly, fairly clearly, and interestingly enough, online, when uh, when Steve Jobs then approached Paul Rand to design a logo for the uh, next machine, what I've read online is that that happened in 1986, and that he, when he approached uh, Paul Rand, he said, "It's going to be a cube." And can you design a logo for it? So it seems that at that point he already had uh, had fixated on the on the cube. So I was a little bit wondering whether his idea for the cube came um, because he saw the connection machine, or you know whether there was a reciprocity there, or or whether it was sort of a coincidence that he then also came to you and 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 said, uh, you know, I think the way you worded it the first time you mentioned it, it was. He said to you, uh, find out who designed the connection machine. I want them to design the next cube. And then then you said, sorry, she's gone to Germany to become an artist. Right, right, right. Um, I think um, I think the cube idea was probably he, he had pretty early on only because and I think he he must have seen pictures of the connection machine and gone, aha, that's what I <laughs> this is this is what I'm more or less imagining, you know, uh-huh. um, because uh, because as I said, he really liked going for simple, uh, stark geometric uh, forms, uh-huh. and uh, you know, manufacturing be damned. <laughs> uh-huh, right, yeah. You know, we, we're going to do something incredible. Uh, and uh, we'll figure out how to to produce it, um, not vice versa. Uh, 